Hello, this is Joe from This Filipino American Life. Today we're going to read a story called The Filipino and the Drunkard, written by William Sarian. It was published in 1935, when thousands of young Filipino men, the Manong generation, roamed the West Coast. In this story, a Filipino is waiting to take the ferry in San Francisco. He suddenly gets severely harassed by a drunk white American amidst a large crowd of onlookers, who didn't do too much to help out the situation. Trying to evade the drunk man, the Filipino took the issue in his own hands. Though written almost 80 years ago, this story is so appropriate for these times. Here is The Filipino and the Drunkard. This loudmouth guy in the brown caramel hair coat was not really mean. He was drunk. He took a sudden dislike to the small, well-dressed Filipino and began to order him around the waiting room, telling him to get back, not to crowd up among the white people. They were waiting to get on the boat and cross the bay to Oakland. If he hadn't been drunk, no one would have bothered to notice him at all. But as it was, he was making a commotion in the waiting room. And while everyone seemed to be in sympathy with the Filipino, no one seemed to want to bother about coming to the boy's rescue, and the poor Filipino was becoming very frightened. He stood among the people, and this drunkard kept pushing up against him and saying, I told you to get back. Now get back. Go way back. I fought 24 months in France. I'm a real American. I don't want you standing up here among white people. The boy kept squeezing nimbly and politely out of the drunkard's way, hurrying through the crowd, not saying anything and trying his best to be, a de- to be as decent as possible. He kept dodging in and out while the drunkard stumbling after him. And as time went on, the drunkard's dislike grew and he began to swear at the boy. He kept saying, You fellows are the best dressed men in San Francisco and you make your money washing dishes. You've got no right to wear such fine clothes. He swore a lot, and it got so bad that a lot of ladies had to imagine they were deaf and weren't hearing any of the things he was saying. When the big door opened, the young Filipinos moved swiftly among the people, fleeing from the drunkard, reaching the boat before anyone else. He ran to a corner, sat down for a moment, then got up and began looking for a more hidden place. At the other end of the boat was the drunkard. He could hear the man swearing. He looked about for a place to hide and rushed into the lavatory. He went into one of the open compartments and bolted the door. The drunkard entered the lavatory and began asking others in the room if they had seen the boy. He was a real American, he said. He had been wounded twice in the war. In the lavatory, he swore more freely, using words he could never use where women were present. He began to stoop and look beyond the shut doors of the various compartments. I beg your pardon, he said to those he was not seeking. And when he came to the compartment where the boy was standing, he began swearing and demanding the boy come out. You can't get away from me. You got no right to use a place white men use. Come out or I'll break the door. Go away. The drunkard began to pound on the door. You've got to come out sometime. I'll wait here till you do. Go away. I've done nothing to you. He wondered why none of the men in the lavatory had the decency to calm the drunkard and take him away. And then he realized there was no other men in the lavatory. Go away. The drunkard answered with curses, pounding the door. Behind the door, the boy's bitterness grew to rage. He began to tremble, not fearing the man, but fearing the rage growing in himself. He brought the knife from his pocket and drew open the sharp blade, holding the knife in his fist so tightly that the nails of his fingers cut into the flesh of his palm. Go away! I have a knife. I do not want any trouble. The drunkard said he was an American. 24 months in France. Wounded twice. One in the leg and one in the thigh. He would not go away. He was afraid of no dirty little yellow belly Filipino with a knife. Let the Filipino come out. He was an American. I will kill you. I don't want to kill any man. But you are drunk. Go away. Please do not make any trouble. 
He could hear the motor of the boat pounding. It was like his rage pounding. It was a feeling of having been humiliated, chased about and made to hide. And now it was a wish to be free, even if he had to kill. He threw the door open and tried to rush beyond the man, the knife tight in his fist. But the drunkard caught him by the sleeve and drew him back. The sleeve of the boy's coat ripped, and the boy turned and thrust the knife into the side of the drunkard, feeling it scrape against rib bone. The drunkard shouted and screamed at once, then caught the boy at the throat, and the boy began to thrust the knife into the side of the man many times, as a boxer jabs in the clinches. When the drunkard could no longer hold him and fall into the floor, the boy rushed from the room. The knife still in his hand, blood dripping from the blade, his hat gone, his hair mussed, and the sleeve of the co- his coat badly torn. Everyone knew what he had done, yet no one moved. The boy ran to the front of the boat, seeking some place to go, then ran back to the corner, no one daring to speak to him and everyone aware of his crime. There was no place to go, and before the officers of the boat arrived, he stopped suddenly and began to shout at the people. I did not want to hurt him. Why did you stop him? Is it right to chase a man like a rat? You knew he was drunk. I did not want to hurt him, but he would not let me go. He tore my coat and tried to choke me. I told him I would kill him if he did not go away. It is, my, it is not my fault. I must go to Oakland to see my brother. He is sick. Do you think I am looking for trouble when my brother is sick? Why didn't you stop him? That's the end of the story. Um, I mean, it's a lot. Uh, If you have any thoughts about this short story that we've just read, um, let us know what you think on all our social media accounts. Uh, like us on Facebook, follow us on Twitter at TFL Podcast. Um, you can leave a comment on iTunes if you subscribe and rate to us. Leave us a voicemail and let us know what your reaction was to the story. Uh, 805-394-8325. 805-394-TFL. Um, yeah, let us know what, you, what your thoughts are on the story.